everybody, welcome back to the world of skull carving. My name is Hunter, so today I'm going to show you how to carve on a bear skull. Um, full disclosure, I did not buy the skull, I was given this skull, and it will be donated to the Virginia Taxidermist Association Convention this year. So there's no sale of any uh, bear part here going on. Okay, so anyhow. This is going to be a tribute to the uh, United States military, um, those who have uh, paid the full price, those who have been wounded, those who are missing, and those who are currently serving. So just a big shout out and thank you to those, all our veterans, and those currently serving. Um, so what's going on here is, got a couple different designs. Um, so the one on the front here is kind of tribute to those currently serving. Then we have our um, wounded warriors and our prisoner, prisoner of war and missing in action. Um, these will not be the only designs that I'm carving. I'm just starting out with these and then I'll add a bunch of stuff onto it. Um, but I'll show you exactly what burrs and stuff that I use to carve and uh, hopefully you learn some. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna be using a Dremel 4000 with an extension and an adjustable cullet on the end here. Uh, this is super helpful. You can put any size burr in there and just tighten it up. You don't have to uh, switch out the cullets. So I highly recommend that. It's like seven bucks. I'm gonna use a number 105 to start doing the outlines around the outside, like around this guy's head, as well as around these two guys. All right, quick lesson on how I carve letters. Um, obviously the round parts like the P on P and the O, um, I'll use something like a number one, uh, 106 or 105, but everything else I use um, a 108 or a 111. And what I'll do is Always just imagine this being the burr. Right, I guess I can get a burr for you. This isn't a 111, but just for example's sake, um, I'll come from this angle and cut. So then what you're getting is uh, you're cutting down like this. Okay. And then I'll come back from this angle, cut this side. So then you get like that. And that gives you nice, clean trough where that letter is. So I've done both the sides, then I'll come for the top and the bottom, come from this side, go across, come back for the bottom, go across, and that's what gives me really sharp, uh, nice clean letters. Okay, so I'm finished on this side. Uh, I ended up using a 106 to do the outlines, and then uh, I did a 111 to do the lettering, the little banner underneath, and the tower. And then for the stippling on the inside, I used a 105. Now we're going to switch over to the other side, and it's pretty much just a simple outline here, and then we'll do the letters. To do the lettering here, I use mostly a 108 and a 109, 
Um, and I did, for some of the rounder letters, I used a 105. But I wanted to show you on the front here, um, this little star with a silhouette in it. Um, hopefully you can see it. But I did a lot of these little tiny micro circles. And I'm going to show you real quick how I did that. Just get you a burr that's got a pointy end. Um, the one I, with the little circles I did on this, the bear skull here, I used one of these dentist burrs. And what you do is you just bend it um, so that it creates a little wobble. If it's straight, it's just going to spin in place. But if you bend it, it's going to have this little wobble and it'll carve out a perfect circle. Now this one, it is bent. It's just very slightly bent, so it's hard to see. Um, these little cheap ones that you can buy on Amazon, uh, the diamond dust spurs, what you do is just grab it, and bend it. So, see how it's bent like that? And then based on the size of circle that you want is just how much you bend it. Now, if you're going to try and bend a Dremel burr, one of the burrs you get from Dremel, uh, you'll have to heat that up first and then bend it, otherwise it just snaps. Yeah, so it creates these little tiny spirals and I used it on a uh, bear paw so I did a bear like a bear track uh, a recessed bear track on a skull and then I did that on the inside and it made it look like kind of the palm of a bear so it's pretty cool uh, but you know you can do different sizes uh, this is what I did on the uh, in the silhouette of the star I don't claim to be the best at carving scales but here's how I do it First, I do the round part, kind of the outline, with a, a 106 or a 105, depending on the size of the scale. Then I come back with a number 108 and carve out in between each of the scales to give it that definition. Uh, then the third step would be to come back and carve into each of the scales to give it um, some depth. So you, you have a little round ball looking uh, diamond dust spur and you use that to carve into the each scale and then lastly you'll come back with a diamond dust spur kind of looks like a nail and you just use that to really um, define each of the scales clean them up a bit and just make them look really nice so got all the carving done um, still got to put the teeth back in but my next step is going to be to stain the whole thing and because I've got um, some of the stars and stripes on the front here I'm going to be doing some blue and red uh, and I'm using a acid dye Let's see if I can get it up here that's the red and blue and I'll put a link in the description where you can buy those. So for the acid dye, you're going to mix it with water. And you don't need much. Just uh, you want it to be like almost a paste. Just because if it's too watery, uh, it'll leak out or seep into places you may not want it to go. So you just put a little bit or enough of this uh, acid dye in there to make a good... Uh, thick pa er, paste. Alrighty, so I'm all done. Um, turned out kind of like how I imagined. I kind of wanted that washed out, uh, dirty look. And that's what I got. Um, 
So as far as the staining goes, um, I use the acid dye for the red and blue, and then I put a clear coat of polyurethane on there because uh, I came back with a black um, ebony wood stain, and what I don't want to happen is for that black stain to seep into the, the bone and it just gets the super dark look which I wasn't going for. Uh, so that layer of polyurethane helps to uh, fill in all the little cracks where that stain might go in and allows you to wipe it off and uh, bring out the texture of your carvings. So first, <clears throat> first coat was the uh, acid dye, second coat was polyurethane, third coat was the black uh, wood stain, and then finally I lock everything in with the final coat of polyurethane. So four coats all together. Turned out nice though. Hope you learned something. If you have any questions, just let me know. But thanks for watching. Thanks again for watching, guys. Uh, don't forget to subscribe so you see what I come out with uh, in about two weeks. And check me out on Instagram at US Skull Hunter. Uh, Richard Howard left a five star review on my Facebook page and he said, Absolutely love your YouTube channel. Thanks for sharing your knowledge and skills. Well, thank you, Richard. What a coincidence. All right, guys. Thanks for watching again and take care.